Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome to a recap of what happened on our Twitch channel in 2023. I actually started off the year learning Super Mario RPG Legend of the Seven Stars on the Super Nintendo. This, however, ended up directly overlapping with an event that Kat and I were planning at the time called Striking Cancer Out, so I only ended up running it three times. When I thought about returning to it, Nintendo very unexpectedly announced, hey, after 27 years, uh, we're going to recreate Mario RPG on the Switch. So I'm not actually sure if I want to learn the Switch remaster or return to the SNES original in 2024, but regardless, I would like to return to Mario RPG in some form, and I ended up with a final time of 4 hours, 0 minutes, and 15 seconds, which is good enough for a sweet, sweet 89th place. So, I also learned Doki Doki UNC Crazy Land Dai Sai Kusen, which I am almost certain I'm pronouncing wrong. I'm gonna be honest with you guys, if something on our channel looks like a weeb, or sounds like a weeb, or smells like a weeb, it's definitely been cat influenced. Okay, and you're probably thinking right now, okay Dave, you're a weeb hater, and I would like you to know that for the first time in my life this year, I actually watched anime. <laughs> Kat and I went through Death Note, and it was also the biggest disappointment I think I've ever experienced in my entire life. But yeah, this one ended up being a childhood game of Cat, so I learned it on that merit alone. It's actually got some pretty neat mechanics, like the lower your health is, the higher your damage output is. I ended up with a 2314, which is absolutely horrible. Absolutely terrible. Like, actually bad. Kat Kunuichi, my girlfriend and I, also ran Goof Troop this year on what seems like an eternal quest to bop two legendary runners named Blecky and Cypher. Cypher is going to be a name that pops up a few times this year, but Co-op Goof Troop ranks among my all-time favorites for speedruns. The coordination between two people required and the pacing is fantastic. Until Pete at the very end. Pete is a major source of RNG. We had Pete fights Co-op as low as I think 46 seconds and as high as 2 minutes and 30, and there's nothing that you can do about it. So where we're at right now, we just needed one good run to end with one good Pete. The best part is the game gave us that one run during this grind, and we actually entered Pete 29 seconds ahead of our current PB, which not only would have let us beat Blackie and Cypher, but let us comfortably sink below sub-18 minutes and possibly even have a podium spot. And guess what happened? I accidentally died, so we never saw that pace again. And then we finished the Goof Troop grind at 18.17 instead, and Blackie and Cypher remained victorious. Bucky was one of my main grinds this year, and Bucky on paper means a lot to me. It's a childhood game of mine that, solo and in hard mode specifically, might be my favorite speedrun on the NES console. When I was a new speedrunner, I had aspirations of specifically having a top 3 spot in Bucky one day, um, more so in the hard mode category. And I won't bore everyone with details, but in 2019, some unexpected stuff happened in my life that left me with a lot of trauma and depression. I think this kind of altered the competitive mindset that I had because it was really compromised back then. And same with the energy levels and just general motivation to seriously put effort into like this little speedrunning hobby. In 2023, however, something happened. I felt better. Uh, I, yeah, and it was good. So I went into 2023 feeling much more motivated and confident about myself in all aspects, life and speedrunning. My target was immediately decided, Bucky. I wanted a second place run in hard mode, I wanted to bop Cypher, and I wanted to at least get a run that had zero accidental deaths. Um, Cypher inadvertently got me into speedrunning because I remember way back in 2014 seeing his run in ADDQ Live, and my mind was blown back then. And I did it. I ended up getting first in warp list this year, second in normal, and second in hard mode. Uh, I also ran Dream World Pogi, ended up with a 619, which at the time of this video is made is good enough for third place. Congratulations to Epic Neon Ninja Monkey and Agent Wyvern who decided to suffer way more than I did to drop their time even further. Dreamworld Pogi was done for a group called Board Boosters, which honestly, they're a really good group of people and I'd rather talk about them than Dreamworld Pogi. So basically they pick a game every couple of months that doesn't have a lot of runs on speedrun.com. They all learn it together and if that's something that you think that you might enjoy, I'll actually leave their discord in the video description below. So feel free to join it and yeah, definitely check it out, like they're a really good group of people. The, the games that they learn are random. It, it's, it's always different every month. Some are better more than others, that's for sure. And Dreamworld Pogi, I didn't like the game very much, but I did like the people in Board Boosters. Most of them. <laughs> here's, here's looking at you, Bug Doctor. 
Celeste Mario Zap and Dash, even if you have no interest in this speedrun, it's worth checking out just because it has to be one of the most technical and impressive hacks of Super Mario Bros. 1 ever. This game was picked up by quite a few runners and optimized very quickly. After everyone made top 3 very competitive, I did want to return to it, but I didn't go back to it yet. This one is right up my alley though, focusing on insane amounts of precision and execution. I really enjoyed it a lot. And then, there was Home Alone 2. I learned this game because I told Scarface Nico, who was on the fence about holding a tournament himself, that if he held a tournament, not only would I join, but I would also learn the game. So he held the tournament, I learned the game. It's pretty simple. I ended up with a best time of 7.15, which honestly wasn't too bad, but admittedly I didn't practice this a huge amount, and I also didn't take Dr. Nico's PhD course in elevatorology or whatever it is to understand how to lower my time further. I have to admit though, this run is... Uh, well, it's not great, um, but it's, it's not bad either. It's somewhere weirdly in the middle. So a small part of me does want to return one day to maybe try to lower my time, but it's mostly because I feel I could have done so much better in the first place. Outside of the beam section, uh, which isn't necessarily difficult, it's just very punishing, there isn't really any hard tricks or execution or anything like that in this game. I did submit a PV in 50 rounds for Warriors Woods at some point earlier this year, but since then I joined a tournament and I lowered my sums at best by nearly 4 whole minutes, so it's sitting somewhere like a 30 or something like that. I also never submitted the updated PVs and I seemingly lost them now, so there's no proof of that. I also risked had a lot in this game this year, and I still cannot beat her. It's impossible. Do you know how historians talk about the Dark Ages? I think that's what Techno World Wrestling is on my Twitch channel. No one in the entire time I've ever had a Twitch account said, Dave, can you please run Tecmo World Wrestling? Yet for 30 straight hours spread across a multitude of streams, the chat was bequeathed this honorous glory. Suddenly, everyone followed professional wrestler Peen King on his journey for the perfect run. And I actually got it. The old record was nearly 21 minutes. Actually, it was nearly 22 minutes. And the run that I had was 5 minutes and 36 seconds. Two seconds shy of the task. The only time I left on the table was through a bunch of start button presses. For all intents and purposes, Tecmo World Wrestling, sadly, very sadly, might be the most perfect run I've ever done. I returned to Chippendale solo after running it with Co-op with Cat with the sole purpose of getting a run where I didn't mess up Jay. I went from a 9.52 down to a 9.49, and in Jay, I messed up Jay. It was great! Cypher and Blecky returned as nearly 10 year old opponents for us to beat in Co-op Chippendale. Co-op Chippendale is a really unique run. Optimized, your margin for error is incredibly razor thin. Every flyer you grab in the stage matters, and if you grab too many or too few, the run is over. If you accidentally die at any point, the run is generally over. A very stark contrast from Solo, where by the end you have like 9 extra lives. Cat went above and beyond when it came to running this with me. I said it one time streaming, but up until she ran at co-op, she almost never played this game solo, so she was suddenly thrust into just having to do everything at a really high level, and we ended up with a 9.22. 9.22 beat Cypher and Blecky, but also another legendary duo, Sinister One and Endy Sweet. Big shout out to Sinister One who helped Kat and I learned so much. He literally made us tutorial after tutorial after tutorial that nobody asked for, just because he wanted to see us succeed. So yeah, we finished this grind with 9.22, which is good enough for second place, and the record in this is insane. Sinister One and General Andrews have done such a good job at this game. It is, it is so crazy. My current focus on Twitch, and one of the last things I'll talk about in this video is Battle Kid. My current focus is trying to beat it on Unfair. If you have no idea what Unfair Battle Kid is, it's basically, it's a 1cc clear. So if you die at any point on Unfair, you get kicked back to the title screen, and then you don't get a second chance. The furthest that I've made it in so far is about 28 minutes, the record is about 37, so it's pretty tough, but I've enjoyed it immensely. Battle Kid is a speedrun is just a really, really, really good run. Um, a long time ago, both Kat and I raced it, and I love the idea of one death clear, because when we raced it, whatever it was, like four years ago or something now, we both took 15 hours to beat it, and we each died about 1500 times, so it's a ridiculous speedrun. So yeah, that basically summed up 2023 and kind of what happened on Twitch. There's a couple of cool statistics from the dashboard that I just want to read. In the last year, there's been 2,740,000 minutes watched on our channel, which is insane. There has been 139,445 people that have sent messages in chat, which is also insane. So thank you guys for making the community very fun. There has been 943 people that followed. 
we have been able to apply for and get rejected for partner, <laughs> which I can also apply in a couple days after I make this video, so we'll see if it happens and we actually do get it this time. And on top of that too, Kat and I have held multiple community events like NES Day or the Mystery Speedrun event. We've also created a secondary channel called Arcade Monthly, where we host kind of like score attack kind of stuff. So if you feel like checking any of that stuff out on Twitch, uh, just follow the links here and yeah. Thank you guys for an excellent 2023 and here's hoping that 2024 is equally as good.